Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. Are you, you know how we do. We always yeah, keep it 100. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8192 Podcast. We're always keeping 100. I am your host, Harrison, and we are joined today by family. This is the second appearance on the 8192 Podcast. So welcome back, Chubby Sensei. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Appreciate you having me, brother. How you been, okay. man? How's life? I've been, I've been good. I've been good. Um, It's definitely, like I say all the time, it's definitely a day-by-day journey being back. Um, I know I definitely took um some time off so this is different from the last time you here we had co-hosts to where now it is um just me so you know you are actually the first interview i've done since coming back um mm-hmm. so and i thought it was probably more fitting that you did come back because you just released shadow boxing um mm-hmm. i always get lp and ep confused so i'm assuming this is a limited place so lp it's i mean uh, ep lp that's is to be honest, all all of the little that's pretty much just wording, man. It's just like I mean, it, it's broke up by time limits and things like that. But the project is under thirty minutes, so I'm just yeah, saying, it, yeah, we're gonna call it. Easy. It definitely it definitely made it easy to it definitely made it easy to like listen to multiple times. You know, somebody yeah. needs something to, like listen to an hour and then try mm-hmm. to uh, find out what you like the most. But it um, mm-hmm. it made it fitting for basically for the interview just because what the the nature of the context was not some of the subject matter but just from you know going through something and then making a return um you had obviously been putting out work but you know just for um you know i feel like when you said it you know uh from the start to finish from shadow boxing to like last song being all right you know you had been going through some stuff and you kind of you know kind of reemerged, and then for myself kind of transitioning um just from what this was to what it is now, starting from what it was, I felt like this was a perfect mesh for uh first interview because, you know, this was a new beginning. So I appreciate you coming through, but I want to let you go ahead and let everybody know about Shadow Boxing. Shadow Boxing was pretty much, it was it was a project with me just coming out and being, uh, being honest with myself about a lot of things and me really dealing with a lot of... Uh, insecurities and little demons and stuff that I was fighting, man. A lot of doubts and stuff when it came to music, career path. There was just a lot of stuff going on in my life at the time. And um, I really wasn't motivated to make music. And uh, the music that I was making, I wasn't feeling like it was up to par or whatever. You know you know how you create a standard for yourself with the work you do. And like you, you just get to a point where you're like, oh, man, like I can't backslide. So it's like, if this don't feel good enough, I can't step forward with it. But Eventually, I broke all that down, worked through all that, you know, and I was like, you know what, man, I'm just going to do this project for me and be real and be authentic. Let it let everybody know what's been on my mind, the struggles I have been dealing with. And uh, it worked out good, man. You know, shadow boxing, man, you know, even from the the themes of the songs, the energy, it's like it's like it's like listening to a fight, you know, and a guy like he's coming in. He's like, OK. I think I'm prepared. I don't know. We're going to find out. And then by the end, we're all right. You know, it's like I've been knocked down. I took some slugs, but, you know, we're still fighting. We're still going. So that's pretty much the energy of it, you know. It's a darker project, I guess. And uh, starting off on the gate, um, I what surprised me the most is at the beginning on um, Shadow Boxing that you hit the suicide um, subject. To me, mm-hmm. I thought when you when you put out the project, you know, you said you deal with some some dark subjects. Um, usually when people hit that, you know, it's probably in the realm of that, you know, whether it's drinking, some type of substance abuse, I wasn't expecting you to jump at it on the first track. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, one of the things I guess from me outside looking in, you know, we follow each other. I've always wondered, I don't think you notice that you follow my personal page on Twitter, just from the Mm -hmm. interactions we, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know if you notice that's my personal Twitter page versus my podcast page. Oh, uh, man, I probably don't. To be honest, yeah, man, but, I, I don't know. I just be talking freely, bro. Because my I'm personal page is a – because yeah. you're a Colts fan, and I usually uh-huh. say some funny stuff yeah. when you talk about the Colts, and I say something uh-huh. crazy. And then I don't know if you're paying attention. And then – um, and I really noticed it when um, I hit the 10K because I always will say something wild, and I don't know if you'll notice something on my Twitter, then you hit um, 
you hit me back on the Instagram and was like, uh, man, shout out, man, we got to do something. And I was like, I don't know if he's been noticing. I've been talking shit to him on Twitter. So I really don't know if he put two and two together. Then my personal oh, probably, page, probably. Bro. Oh, man, bro. Like, <laughs> so if, if, when I, when I drop way, it, when I drop The way mm-hmm. I navigate social media, man, it's like, I, I know that people have multiple pages for different things and stuff, but me, I oper- I do everything through my personal, you know what I'm saying? I understand that people have different career paths and they got to separate yeah. the two. And it's different stuff, but I don't know. I don't be, I mean, when I know somebody and I know it's you and we talking, sometimes I, you know what I'm saying? Because I got buddy that coaches and all types of stuff, like, you know, that, and I try to have crazy conversations with them. They're like, man, I can't talk to you like that on Twitter, man. You got to hit me up personally. Yeah, so I, yeah. I brought that up to say I wouldn't have, when I when I heard the opening song, it caught me off guard because, you know, you shown like a lot of features or you shown like, you know, and of course it's your, it's your rap page, so you ain't going to highlight the negative stuff, but I thought everything was going gravy. So, you know, when I heard the project, it was just like, oh, man, I would have never pictured, you know, you going through what you was going through. But, you know, I want to ask you, how long had you been going through, like, this dark path? Man, uh, I would say almost, well, since I dropped The Warriors Rising, honestly, it was just, you know, at the time, man, it was just, you know, different things I had going on in life weren't really, you know, going, you know, exactly going my way, I felt like, you know, and it was a lot of, a lot of stuff that I was, I was doing to myself mentally to hold myself back, and I wasn't really, you know, dealing with stuff and really facing my issues head on and stuff, man. It was just, you know, you know how you have that existential angst that creeps in and stuff, you know, with me getting older in age, you know, being a, a content creator at all or entertainer of any type of capacity, you know, you start to feel like, ah, oh, man, is my clock running out or is, am I doing the right things, making the right decisions, you know? And that was just, you know, that was kind of what I was going through, man. And then, you know, I, uh, I was able to do some do some inner work and really work on myself and uh, got myself to a better position all around. You know what I mean? Like financially, life wise, marriage wise, everything. You know, energy was just at an all time high, and I started creating again and getting out, dealing with people again, and it just felt like it was time to express that stuff instead of holding it in, like a lot of men do. You know, like as you said with the social media presence, you probably would have never thought I was going through nothing like that, but that's how it is sometimes. You know. But um, like I said, this is like I said, when I see the artwork, I'm on the ask you, what was the inspiration for the artwork? Because you know, you're big in the anime and comics and stuff like that. What was your inspiration? Yeah, I am artwork? big in the anime and comics. And um, with the with the project being such a personal thing, I wanted to go with an image of, it's still animated, but it's an image of me. And it's me, you know, you see me standing in this space and I'm looking out and I'm looking like I'm unsure and I don't really know what to expect. And then I've got these shadowy figures in the background and these figures could be past traumas. They could be, you know, whatever insecurities. They could be the pressure that you feel as a man or as a husband to provide, to protect, to, you know, live up to other people's expectations. I mean, it's just like it represents a lot of different things, but this is pretty much the dark army of shadows creeping up on me. And it's just like, and I'm contemplating if I'm ready for this or not. That was the yeah. whole thing behind the cover. It was done by a dope artist named Delta, man. He's amazing. Amazing artist. So um, I called you like uh, South. He from South Carolina or North Carolina? I'm from South Carolina. He, Abbeville. Okay. Be, be, be so I called you. I called you like the South Carolina Slim Thug when I first heard you on Warriors Rising. When we mm-hmm. first came on. Because I remember I think I had you with a, uh, a local like entrepreneur from uh, Nashville when you came on the first time. But, uh, you know, but from this last one, you said you've been doing this from Warriors Rising came out in 2021. So you've been yeah, doing this for been, like three it, years. Yeah, but almost, if you hear, yeah. So if you hear this, like a three-year, like, depression, drought type stuff. So what yeah, did much. you, did you, so I've dealt with like, well, sometimes where, I, you know, I feel depressed. And I guess I got to the point, you know, I always said, like, happiness is like a rich people's um emotion. Do you feel that, um, did you even notice it? Like, was it a part of the motion? Three years is a long time. Did you even feel yeah. like it was, did you feel like it was a part of the motion? I felt like, I think, not, not to cut you off, I think that, Are um, you? I think that it clicked to me and I realized what it was that last year as I was starting to work out of it. I realized why I was feeling, how I was feeling and why I was moving, how I was moving and stuff. Like, I was just a lot more anxious, a lot more reserved and kind of i mean i was still going out and doing music and stuff like that because you know i didn't allow it to stop me completely but it was just creatively i felt like i hit a block 
And it was just like I wasn't putting out music like I should have been. I was sitting on songs for a long time and didn't really have a reason why I wasn't dropping it. You know, just all kind of stuff. I just had a lot of stuff bouncing around in my head at the time. But um, I would say that last year, like before I released it, that's when I started to like, okay, it's time to put all this stuff out into the air and come back out swinging, man. You know, and um, that's, you know, that's what birthed this project, man. It was just supposed to be real personal. Like, I usually go with the animated version of myself, the Chubby Sensei, but like I said, with the cover and the aesthetic, it's really just me against me, pretty much. Yeah. What was your light? Like, what brought you out of it? Like, man, honestly, man, my wife being supportive, man, uh, my friends being supportive, uh, just really, um, really digging deep and uh, getting to the, the, the parts of myself that I try to repress, you know what I mean? Just past traumas and stuff, re, you know, trying to realize and understand that the the cycles and stuff that we trap ourselves in mentally, you can not break free of them, especially if you're self-aware of them, because there's a lot of people who are self-aware of their issues, but still don't really do what they need to do to try to correct them or try to fix them, you know what I mean? Because they either have convinced themselves that they're fine to where they are or that they you know, that they've reached this level to where they can't get any better, you know, feeling like they can't change, they can't grow, and it's just, you know, that's never the case, and it should never be the case because, you know, life is an experience that we're all, you know, growing and learning from until we stop living, so, you know. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, as far as, so, you know, um, I want to say, unless I missed it, like I said, I called you the South Carolina Slim Duck from the first time, a couple times mm-hmm. I heard you. But then, um, up until real rappers, you don't you sound like a completely different person. Um, I don't <laughs> think you use your first comic book reference until you say Green Arrow is like Oliver Queen. Mm-hmm. And I always say like you know, I always get like a reference from God. I'm finishing Arrow I, for my like second or third rewatch. Ironically, that you said uh-huh, yeah, that's I'm cool, finishing. Yeah. I'm finishing the TV show as you said it, but you didn't use a comic reference at all until that song yeah. i was just kind of mm-hmm. wondering you know like was that in a way of uh, signifying like through your music like you getting back to yourself like is that your way of storytelling of like getting yourself a despair because like i said even then mm-hmm. between that and all right you didn't use a you didn't use a comic or you didn't use a you know anime type reference until those periods of time even you were uh, i had a couple actually i had a couple ones you know that's why i said unless i missed it unless i missed it yeah yeah you know it's it's one of those things where like well the way i i tend to write music is that like yeah i'm into a lot of nerd core a lot of uh blurred culture or whatever you want to call it man but it's just like i try to make it to where because like nerdcore music has this weird reputation of people thinking it's corny or something, or like it's just mm-hmm. it's too it's too focused on the subject matter to where it can't really apply to anything else. And it's just like, yeah, I'm a I'm a regular dude that's having a regular life experience, and I'm trying to figure it out just like everybody else. And I just so happen to like anime. I just so happen to like video games. You know what I mean? It's like it's not necessarily my identity but it's something that i love and i don't mind sharing it you know what i'm saying like it's just you know yeah. it's, it's part of the package when you meet me you meet all of my interests it's just you know i'm a very yeah. outwardly projecting type of person so it's just I, I like to weave it in there I, I think on this project they were a lot more subtle the the, the anime yeah. bars and stuff it was more so character names and situational things like if you know about specific details it would stick out to you you know what i mean it's like like kind of like easter eggs it's like little easter eggs yeah. the way i look at it so yeah um no nah, like i said i, I think it's funny because um i don't know how you know i know you've watched the show i, I don't know how frequent like i said you'll see my you see my collection i'll send it to you you see my collection yeah. you know mm. you know like um i know i know um you promote your marriage you promote you know, you promote your regular life. You don't promote shooting, killing, and stuff like that. That wasn't true. Mm-hmm. You was a normal person. You 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 can watch the wire. You could you can watch Snowfall. You could do all that. You can find stuff entertaining. You can listen to rap, but you know, mm-hmm. you never promoted anything other than your identity. And you know, I think that's what you basically. But you can sound like um, James Earl Jones, deep voice. You can look, man. You can have mm-hmm. that, and, but you can promote your life. So you ain't got to do anything more than what you can. And mm-hmm. so, you know, like I said, um, but you ain't got to be soft just because you watch Luffy yeah. or just because you watch Oliver Queen. I think that's what you always yeah. like. I still want to be a rapper, but I don't want to be 
Urkel or nothing like that. So I feel like you yeah, know, exactly, that, exactly. you know, like when you when you say nerd core, like you know, that don't mean like nigga, I don't, don't want to play two K. I don't want to do like what they say. I don't want to do hood rap shit with my friends. Like, like yeah, you know, exactly, like, exactly. Yeah. You know, I feel like when you hear your raps, I feel like you know you don't have to be like. Uh, I feel I, I get what you're saying. Let's just make it yeah. easier. Like that. you don't have um, to be I'll, OD with it. You don't have to be like naming I'll, every character from Bleach and every bar for a verse. Even though that would be impressive, it's like can't nobody relate to that. You know what I mean? Like it's not. It's yeah. not really gonna do anything for you. It's not gonna motivate you. It's not gonna inspire you. But me saying something like uh saving the game like the symbol of peace you know what i'm saying like saving the rap game the symbol of peace all might you know what i mean like you gotta know my hero academia to, to get that reference you know what i'm saying the symbol of peace you gotta know that to get that little nugget now do you wonder like when you do for now what i do wonder is have you ever wondered when you do rap like that though? Like you know, do you you listen to battle rap I'm, if I'm not mistaken I think we said that last time we was on there yeah right? I do but I mean I'm I'm not as I guess as versed as a you know a, a, a fan as you may assume with the, with the way well, I, I rap, but like I really I love it and keep up with it. Like I don't really have a favorite or anything like that, but I do watch it a lot. Yeah. Well, I guess my reason why I ask you that is just like I would think that bar is I would think that bar is cold, right? But you mm -hmm. know, if you don't watch My Hero Academia, if I sit there it's, and say, you, um, "Man, you know get cool," yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, go, so yeah. when you do, so when you do have bars like that, like when you said, like I said, the Oliver Queen one. Uh, if you don't watch that type of stuff, do you, does it, how do you put your personality in there and make bars like that and mm -hmm. sit there and try to be a person that would be on a cypher for Sprite or mm -hmm. a nigga that goes and gets in a battle with like a Kendrick or a Drake or mm -hmm. a J. Cole, if it's going to be hard to feel like this nigga just saying rant, like this nigga saying shit from Harry Potter. Yeah, you know, but, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you? Nah, I get it. I get it. I get it. That's a great question too. It's just um for me, man, like when it comes to when it comes to incorporating things like that into your music, it's more so about like you said, like um it's about figuring out how to put your personality into it and not um mm -hmm. not just make a name. You know what I mean? Like I could say I got hands like Goku, or I could say from an I feel like um feel like I'm alien crash landed like Kakarot or something like you know, it would be a, the way you frame it makes it sound different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not like you just doing a name drop. It's like you connecting it to something. Like I feel like I'm different. I feel like I'm not from here. You know what I mean? Like it's just the way you frame things and stuff, man. But it, I mean, for me, it's just kind of effortless. It's just it's not really something that I really worry about because a lot of my hardcore fans will get it. You know, it's, I mean, you, of course, you got those people that look for that type of stuff, and then the people that are just listening for the vibes, and some people that just like the beat selection. It's a lot of different things, but. The people who are there for the bars and for the anime stuff, they gonna get that stuff because they absorb so much of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, it's an Easter egg. But then I got songs like in B where it just kind of bounces and it's just kind of fun. And then like you know, if you keep up with basketball, you know who Joel and B is. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just. But I had anime bars in that one too. Like it's just, I don't know. I just kind of, I just kind of let my ideas flow, and I don't really worry about. Oh man, I don't know if they gonna feel like this is just some bullshit or not. You know, and I try to talk about the characters in ways that it relates to me, you know, like in um in the song Now nah, I'm Straight, I said, um, and let me think of the bar. That's crazy. That's how you know I've been I ain't been sitting on it that long. I was just inspired and put it out. But I said uh I had to had a curse on me to break it like Yuji. Had to break a curse like Yuji. Yuji Itadori yeah. from Jujutsu Kaisen, you know what I mean? But that could be a generational curse. They could be you having negative energy as a curse. You know what I mean? It, just, it applies to different things. Yeah, I was. I, was, I wanted to ask you. Um, I, I know it fits for maybe like an underground basis, but do you wonder um, what you promote in your marriage and stuff like that? Does you wonder um, what you being that personal? Do does it create like a? It's not promoted for the business of you. If you was an R and B mm -hmm. nigga, maybe. But even then, to a certain extent, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, do you kind of wonder, like, the does it put more pressure, like, on it? Because, you know, you, you or because of your rap style, does it kind of, like, leave you out of it? Because you're not promoting that type of lifestyle. Does it kind of, like, leave you off? I mean, you even that type I have, of nigga. Like, yeah, nine to five. I say certain, yeah, yeah. I say, I say certain things in my songs to what, you know, like, when my wife hears it, she's like, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, why would like, like you got a girl on your own look like Latoya Lucky? Like, I don't look like Latoya Lucky. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, but if you're a 90s kid and you grew up watching, you know, you know who Latoya Lucky is. You're like, oh, I'm yeah. this woman. You know, it's just, you know, sometimes I just, I'm just expressing thoughts more so than having targeted statements. You know what I mean? So it's like, for me, I don't feel like I have to put on this facade and have to act like I'm this this big player and I'm all of this and I got, you know, saying this and that, you know, even though I talk with a little bit of bravado, that's just, you know, me exuding that confidence. It's not like in my MC and the energy that I carry, not necessarily me trying to flex on this person, that person, what I feel like it comes across in a lot of the mainstream stuff. That's why most people promote themselves as single instead of being in a relationship because like I feel like that's part of the market employee as well. When you seem available to your fan base, especially if you have like a kind of, if you have that sex appeal, like a female artist, if you, it, it would be almost less beneficial for them to come out and like, oh, I'm married and I do this and I do that. Unless you're Beyonce and let me cater to you and all, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, it's just, it just depends. It depends on the energy that you projecting, you know, and it's meant for who it's meant for, you know, the people that will resonate with it or resonate with. You know, for me, with my reach, I don't really care about being, I don't care about reaching the top because I already feel like my ability can put me there. I honestly feel that way. I feel like it's guys numbers that are saved in my phone that I could call at any moment that are better than 90% of people's top fives. Like really pin, like pin the pad. They are better. And it's just like, it's hard to argue that type of stuff with people who only see the optics. You know what I mean? They only see the diamond chains. They only see the foreign cars. They only see the millions of views. And it's just like, when it comes down to music, I don't feel like I have to put myself in that box to compete with those people on that type of realm. When it comes to bars and rapping, I can stand with anybody. You know what I mean? I really feel like that. And I just carry that into my music, man. Like It's, just, it's really some no fear just doing me. Unapologetically type. That's the energy. Yeah. Of I, I guess I always said, like I said, I, I can see the crooks. Like I, you know, you. I mean, I can see the, the obstacle. I guess I could put it like that. You know, I think mm -hmm. it. I I've been a certain obstacle myself. I guess you know, I don't think that. This I put it like this. I fame or attention or whatever is not for the week. I'm not calling either one of y'all. So let me, you know, just mm -hmm. like I just I noticed that you know, um, I always wonder, you know, is it something that you got to really sit there and think about for consequence, you know, the bigger and bigger you get, you know, you want to see how strong it is. So I always wonder, was that something that you y'all talked about or would it cause more harm just to be single? You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, I, but I always wonder, but the style doesn't. Um, my mm -hmm. take on it, you know, the album, uh, my favorite two songs was I liked All Right, but I liked um, uh, Don't Tell Me, uh, Real Rappers. But okay. again, because it was Oliver Queen. Oliver Queen. Yeah. But yeah. it's because, like I said, I'm watching Arrow right now again. Um, I'm on season eight. I'm on season eight. Um, last couple episodes. Um, and um, my take on it is, if I was to say the whole project after listening to it, um, I'm gonna say that. Well, I actually want to ask you this question before I go there because I don't want to forget my question after this. Um, you said you came back. Well, I wanted to ask you before you came back for the rap game because you said you weren't putting out music. Is it hard to, because this was one of the hiccups for me of coming back, is it hard to come back and produce music in an uh, era? Because up until Drake and Kendrick got into it, what was music really? Is it hard to come back and sit there and want to sit and put out, because um, you only put out a 30-minute tape, good or not, you were rapping, but it was a 30-minute mm -hmm. tape, right? Yeah. Is it hard to put out something where you just seen sexy put out that, for other than Drake's verse bullshit, mm -hmm. you know, like what it inspires you when you know that people don't care about talent. I mean, no, well, I don't see for me, I disagree with that. I don't think it's that people don't care. I think it's just that for when, sales box. when you think like it's it's like um I mean, but look at Kendrick and Drake, you know what I'm saying? Like they were up until up until it was the drama. Yes, it was the drama attached to it that made it go, but the thing that made the internet cut in half was their ability. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know that Drake can make a slap whenever he get ready, whether you like him or not, he's going to make a slap. And I mean, you, you know, know that Kendrick you know, is I, You know I stand with Aubrey. You know I stand with Aubrey. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, no a, you know, I'm a Kendrick. But, you know, it, 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 it really doesn't matter because I'm a fan of them both. It's not like yeah. it was going to be 
if Kendrick wins, I'm not going to listen to Drake no more. Or if it's, you know, yeah. it was never nothing like that. It was, it was just cool to see two people with elite skill in the catalog to back it up, to go at it. And it's crazy that it took that for people to realize, oh man, like the lyrical content is cool. You know what I mean? And I feel like Griselda showed that with how they came back. Those guys blowing up there in their forties and stuff. And they come, you know, yeah. it's not, it's not what people say it is. I think like, if you want to be Drake, yeah, you got to worry about stuff like that. But for me, I don't necessarily need that. I don't necessarily need to have to compare myself to Lil Wayne or Drake or Taylor Swift. So I don't have to do the type of things that they would do to stay relevant or to check that box to make sure they maximize sales. Like I don't mind being in a niche market. And I think that's what a lot of people are afraid of. And that's why the music is so watered down because people are capable of making better music. But they gonna do what works, quote unquote, because they're just trying to get a check from it. You know what I'm saying? And that's fine. I don't I don't shade nobody for that. But it's just for me. I'm gonna try to find a way to to eat off of it my way. You know what I'm saying? Do you that's feel like people make stuff for TikTok? Do you feel like TikTok has killed the music industry though? Because I want to move. I wanted to move them out of it. But if you really think about it, the reason why I said that is because like if I go through my phone up until mm-hmm. that point, and as much as I, you know. They, I, I, Kendrick will never lose my respect, but up until that point, like I said, you know, I mean, there was no real album I'm listening to. I'm listening to my 23 playlist or her lot, but it's the mm-hmm. combination of those three artists. There's nobody sticking big X to plug, I think, maybe, but there's no real rotation or something in a combination of a viral TikTok trend. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so, up until that point, I think music was made to be trended on TikTok. I think you've seen an increase of mm-hmm. older people's albums and sales increase or streams or whatever it is because it was either being played because of a trend or it's being remixed and mm. i think when they seen that because you know i'm not going along with it i think that was the wave of how you made you made it to the ages and whatever app they was doing so you know mm-hmm. when you see that i'll swing it to what kind of was driving me away from podcasting it was so athlete or media person or people that were already established centric Versus, you know, you're in a big wave of people who really like you got <coughs> and it's sharp. So you got other people that can really hire a team, really do this type of stuff. You know, yeah. you got to really be passionate to come out here and um, come out here and do this without 40,000 people, without this editing team, without these people that can push out and come with 30, 40,000 subscribers off rip without a mm-hmm. catalog of celebrities, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's hard to get motivated when you're coming through personal issues or coming through this and then you yeah, see exactly, somebody like exactly. and you see somebody like Nick uh, what's his name, Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart, I don't give a fuck about what they talking about, but they can come in and get mm-hmm. 20, 30 subscribers you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that really motivates, how are you going, what would make you come look at my small market show and for the hundred and whatever episodes I've done, you, you get what I'm saying? Like that's really hard. I think when uh, and yeah, that was, I, I guess you. that that kind of held me up. So that's why I was just wondering. Uh-huh. That. No, I hear you, I hear you. and that that was part of that was part of you know what contributed to my drought as well. You know, it was just you know, I always got great feedback and um, reviews and stuff when it came to my music. So I knew that people consider my music to be better than average. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's still like, damn, like, I can't crack 10K. I can't crack 20, 30K, 100K, a million. So it's like, damn, this shit ain't moving like it's supposed But at the end of the day, bro, it's some people out there that's got a lot more dollars than followers. You feel me? Like, it's just, it really doesn't yeah. matter what it looks like. It's just figuring that, figuring out a system that works for you. Like, yeah. I would recommend for anybody that's in content creation, music, whatever, you got to find different bags that you can eat out of because nobody is, and at least it seems like with the internet right now, nobody has one talent that's good enough to pay every bill. You know what I mean? Like it's just, you got to wear different hats. You get, you have to, if you want to do music, you got to be able to produce, you got to be able to engineer, you got to be able to edit because if you don't have the funding to pay a team, to, you know what I'm saying? To handle everything for you, you got to do everything in house, and that could slow up your production depending on the type of workflow and work ethic you have. I mean, but one thing I think people are really sleeping on a lot is I think there are a lot of people looking for new stuff, and there are a lot of people looking for that the old feeling, the nostalgic stuff. Like, and I think that people sleep on it because 
you see sexy red and you see you know what i mean like you see these people popping up out of your, nowhere and they're real youthful but what you're not seeing is that sexy red also has like marketing geniuses backing her you know what i mean like it's not like it's just she's just doing this and it's just going like not that she's not talented or that she doesn't make good music or nothing like that you know i ain't hating on it but it's just you got to consider all the other things that are behind. Ain't no you lotto. Know you know what I'm saying? Yeah, ain't no lotto, but you know it's trendy. I don't think. I think it's, yeah. <laughs> it is what you it know? is. You know what I'm saying? You can yeah. feel how you feel about it, but it's yeah. just you know what I'm saying. At the end of the day, the way because I'm an artist and I know what goes into it, I know when like I know when something looks like a plant, or I know when something looks like oh, okay, you just had an opportunity, or you just related to somebody, or you know what I'm saying, versus somebody who's really like. Ain't no way you heard that. Ain't no way you heard them said. Ain't no way you got in the. I, I said, ain't no way you got in the booth and looked back there and said, "This is it." Hey, no, ain't no way that you. Yeah. Hey, ain't man, no. Hey, you never. Take bro, Keith. Listen, take Keith. Like, take Keith. <laughs> fuck these niggas. Ain't no way to take Keith. Look back up there and say, "Fuck these niggas up." And then, no, <laughs> come on. Come on. You gotta change the name. Hey, like I just dope, come on. Man. Like the mock. The, like you can't even play that shit. You can't even play that. He got to play it when Drake part come on. When BBL Drizzy come on, he got to say, take he fuck these niggas. But you can't. Hey, say, how to... <laughs> That's like when you see them niggas go on like, uh, what is it? Like 90 day or whatever. Fiance, whatever. You ain't never seen nigga or like, yeah, they got no I neck and say, I love it. Yeah, oh. like I cut it out. Yeah, like cut it out. Uh, I got nah, you, twin. I, like, I got you. But the reason, the reason why, the reason why I don't allow stuff like that to creep into my psyche and mess with the way I do things is because I already know that I am not the target consumer for that. So there's no need in me concerning myself with how that works. It's not for me, so it doesn't matter. So you know, my my energy goes towards figuring out how I can package what I bring to the table for people who are looking for what I'm bringing. You know what I mean? Like in the thing, in the thing, and another thing with um the music scene in America is really different from the music scene in other parts of the world. You know what I'm saying? Like in uh like South Africa, a lot of places in the UK, man, like even Australia, Japan, these people love underground like hardcore hip hop, like they really do. And like and I I, I learned this myself as an artist from data and studying and running ads and different, you know, different zones and stuff to different people. What's hot in America is different from what's hot everywhere else. That's why every time we see trends pop up in hip hop from uh, from different countries and different, you know, people that speak different languages, we like, man, we've been on that. We've been on that. And it's just like, yeah, yeah because we attach to so much new shit just because it's got numbers and we just, we're constantly chasing trends, chasing trends, wave rhyme, wave rhyme. But the people who are consistent, or people like Kendrick, or people like Dre, people like J. Cole. Like, you know, you can't say that the nonsense is dominating the, the, the market when these guys are still the big three. And no one, not like Sexy Red is not close to dethroning either one of them. Lotto is not close to dethroning either one of them. Like, Nikki ain't even. And she's a legend in her own right. But she, nobody would, you know, it just, it's just how you look at it, man. It's just how you look at it. I don't really she'll top, this. she'll top she'll top bell before she top the charts. So uh <laughs> yeah, no, no, Nikki, please. No, I, I get it. Like I said, I just um like I said, I just I to me, I, I can see the parallel comparison of why well, like what's the purpose? I, and I, I, I guess mm-hmm. though, like to me, you know, I, it took you said it's a passion and it took it took me to where I guess I really had to um wanna come back. Because it was, it was. A, I think I took a good little Oops. hiatus. Um, now you good? I think I took a good little hiatus. Um, because I, I had to tell myself I was never doing it for the money. I was never doing it for the fame. Um, it was mm-hmm. just kind of like, like you said, I'm. I taught myself to edit every. I'm putting up these like, I'm thinking they need to be on ESPN edits. But like you said, who mm-hmm. who do all? Who I'm spending hours. Who doing all this for a hundred views? Like who? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> you gotta pay them dues, brother. You gotta. You know pay what I'm saying? Yeah. You know. You speaking facts right there, but you we gotta do it because who else is gonna do it? You know what I'm saying? Ten ten spins, bro. You don't know how the present. <sighs> you know, like you don't know how. Like I'll sit there and like some of my best ones are probably the ones that was probably like over a minute. But now I've kind of trimmed them down. But even now, like some of them are really good. Some of the ones where I put like little cuts or whatever in, 
but like mm -hmm. them was like my goal, and nobody looked at them like chance me. Now I put like like if, if you you've been on phase, now I will just go in there and say some random bullshit, and like now I get some controversy. Like y'all give put like no, like sometimes it's it's a little disheartening that I could come on there and say like Andre three thousand is overrated, and I'm talking about something specifically. I'm talking about just his verse as far as compared to who was on the song. Andre 3000's verse is overrated compared to like Bun B, um, Big Boy, and um, Pimp C. But I'll just mm -hmm. put that one part in, you know, so, ah, you know, so, and that's what does it. But, you know, like, you got to think, like, don't nobody care about that when Cat Williams go on there and say whatever he do for Shannon Sharp. Ain't nobody going to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck out. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you mm -hmm. battle it. For, for for like so but it, it took like a real passion i didn't come back until i really like had that joy of just recording and just in case one you got to really sit there and i'm pretty sure it's the same and now we're tied to my results for what i felt about the project but if as long as i care about what i do and as long as there's one person if one person can be me that's what brought me back until i felt comfortable to do it that's what brought me back which brings it to the thing to what i like the most about it um I liked real rappers alive. Um, I mean, real rappers, real rappers alive. All right? You could, you yeah, know. yeah. Um, and uh, shadow boxing. Like I said, you you start out the gate just dressing it. Um, I think I can't remember which track when you were talking about your wife. Um, you said you let her down and you let your sister, and you just went. Oh, that was weatherproof, weather uh, weatherproof, and uh, shadow boxing. The first two tracks. Those those were the first two songs where I really put most of the. Uh, most of the addressing things into, and then I kind of went into the transition of getting into better energy from that point on. You know what I'm saying? I'll say this about this: what happened with the Jack Harlow tape? I'll say this about the shorter tapes. I won't realize when the next song. I listened about three, three or four times. That's how short it was. I don't realize when the song done changed to the next one because of how short some of them are. So I didn't realize two of them were different songs. <laughs> until I read, like, by the time our writing went by, I'm like, damn, all right, sound like Shadow Box. I'm like, damn, shit over. So I'll say the <laughs> good, the pros and the cons about shorter projects, but um, I'll say um, the, the um, real rappers and all right, because of, at that point, I feel like you had gotten back to, um, at least to me, I feel like by that point, you had delighted came back. I don't know if that was the direction. Just to me, by the time I'm, as I'm listening to it as a fan of the artist, mm -hmm. it seemed like I said, all of the Queen reference seemed like, the rap ride been listened to it came back. If I'm watching a story, you know what I'm saying? That's when you come back. That's when they get their free. That's when they stand up. That's when they say their speeches or whatever. So I was watching a movie and I listened to it like his because I've been around or I've talked to you. I've had enough experiences with you. And I know that we into kind of similar things. I, I looked at it from a story arc version. So I don't mm -hmm. know if I did it wrong. I don't know how everybody else did it, but I looked from a story. Nah, I, mean, I, I, I looked at it from like a yeah. manga or a movie type and I looked mm -hmm. at it as a movie. So once you once I kind of read the description, here's my thing. I kind of looked at it like a hero's journey. So by that mm. point, you kind of stood mm. up and you had your little Terry. I don't know if you was in the rain type nigga. I don't know you could have been musty. I don't know. By that point, you <laughs> took a shower. You know what I mean? Whatever so, it takes, man. We yeah, you know whatever it, it takes. Whatever it takes. Nah, it, it so. is. You know, it, it it was intended to be that way. You know, like I said, it was like it was like a bout. It was like a championship fight with you and all your demons, and it's just. How you gonna come out on the other end of it? You know what I'm saying? And it's just like it's an ongoing fight; it never ends. You know, it, it's constantly yeah. growing, constantly changing. And like you were saying earlier, we're like dealing with the the issues with motivation and seeing results. And um, I think it's just I know for me, what started to change for me to where I felt like I had more opportunities and more growth was when I stopped um, thinking about the things I was doing and not seeing what I thought I was supposed to be seeing and start focusing on the things I wasn't doing. Like, what are you like? Are you being as social as you need to be? Are you promoting yourself as much as you need to? Are you being as consistent as you need to? Like, yeah, you can, you can be the most talented rapper in the world, but if you don't show up when it's time to rap, it it's not going to matter. It's not going to go anywhere. Like if you, if you're too good to, rap in front of a stranger on the sidewalk to try to convince them to listen to your project, then you probably not going to make it far. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it's just, it's that type of mentality. It's like, I don't care if it's a room of two people or 2000 or 2 million, you know, I'm going to bring the same energy. I'm going to bring the same effort. I'm going to bring the same, you know, you got to be that way. And, uh, 
when people can see that from your art, when people can see that from your podcast, when they see the type of energy and the type of the, the level of preparation you put into it and thought that you put into it, when someone gets a hold of it that it's meant for, it's going to attach to them and it's going to make them want to tell somebody else about it. You know what I mean? Like most of my reputation in the upstate musically is just word of mouth. It's just, I've met so many people like, oh man, you chubby sensei, man. Like, man, I done heard so much about you and do, 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 this and that. And it's like, it's cool for me because coming from a small town like Abbeville where everybody know me, but every other day somebody asking me, oh man, you still rap? Like, you know, like stuff like that will really like get on your nerves and stuff, especially if you feel like you're not really, uh, you're not really in a place where all your work is being realized. But at the end of the day, I just got to remind myself that, you know, this probably just isn't what, this isn't the person that my product is for. You know what I'm saying? You just got to move on from that and keep going and keep growing, you know? I think, I think that, um, I think that probably the hardest thing is like, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist and I think that like, I want every, I want to make something for everybody. And I think that probably mm -hmm. what the hardest thing is, like you just said, it may not be for everybody. I think when I first started, I didn't want a podcast with just dudes. I wanted females, everybody to do it. Then I didn't want something, I wanted something similar to the breakfast club that I want to change. And I was just kind of doing too much. And then, you know, you just kind of get overwhelmed by like just trying to please everything. And like you said, then I'm out here worrying about what everybody else is doing and why mine, you know what I'm saying? And then, mm -hmm. you know, like you, you, you get so boggled up to where, like, you know, you can look at your success, but, like, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I think, like I said, from this point, like, you know, I'm going to take a breath and, like, just do it for if I enjoy it. If it don't go no further, I think my my goal this time isn't probably hitting the pinnacles, is to do it. It's for this time to stay a passion. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to lose the passion. I think last time it wasn't that I wasn't hitting the pinnacle. I was just kind of running myself thin, doing too much, which is kind of why, you know, I kind of took a step back and came back when I was ready. And I think this time I don't want to worry about the success of whatever pinnacles I reach because clearly we can see from the podcasting game, it is definitely more celebrity based than newer podcasts and breaking yeah, news. Yeah, you know it, you know, so, but, you know, and then that. even with that, it's just, yeah. even with that, it's like I listen to some obscure things sometimes when it comes to podcasts and like I listen to like audio like weird audio books and i'm gonna say weird audio books but like i might listen to stuff where people are narrating the story and it's got good soundscaping and they're doing voice acting and it's just mm. you know i mean it's like i said if, if it, it'll reach the people it's meant for you know what i'm saying the thing yeah. is to just continue to broadcast your signal as far and as wide as you can as often as you yeah. can at the end of the day growth is about consistency that's that's, yeah, what, that's all, all that shit is you got to show up every day and even with these uh social media outlets and the way these algorithms work, they reward people who abuse the app. Like, you have to abuse it. You know, if you want to see that growth, you got to. You know, and then you never know what piece of content would be the thing. Like, I know how with podcasting, it's more of like, I hate that it's more so driven by gossip and uh, clickbait than the actual subject. Oh, hold on. You, you got it. It's also about. driven by, you also driven by, what, what's the word they say? Um, high value men. And niggas ain't oh, shit. Oh yeah, oh, a good and, relationship. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, thirty dollars, thirty dollars ain't shit for lunch. You know what I'm saying? Oh you yeah, got, man. Nah, yeah. you know, I mean, I feel it. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't mad at them for taking advantage of it because that's the conversation everybody wants to have. I mean, you just gotta have a certain level of discernment for yourself as a human. Like, okay, I know this is bullshit. I know this is like it's what it's whatever it is, and when you're a purist, when it comes to whatever your art form or whatever your medium is, sometimes it's, it's hard for you to to reason with it and like be okay with it. It's like, man, I don't, I can't do that because that ain't me. I don't want to have to do that for my city to go. I don't want to have to stoop to that level. But at the same time, I don't really judge nobody because sometimes you got to put the, sometimes you got to put the medicine in the applesauce types. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to conceal yourself and you got to do what's working for other people no nah, yeah um i heard that it is i heard what it is it is what it is like i said them them the niggas that's like the sexy reds the fresh and fits and like i said but like i said that's why i asked you that question because honestly that's honestly the route sometimes like, niggas create controversy for content and yeah. i just can't it's not my character you know what i'm saying i asked you mm -hmm. because some of the, i feel like a lot of the ways you rap is kind of the way i podcast it's just my personality mm -hmm. and i felt sometimes the way 
that you went was kind of the way I was starting the podcast where I kind of cared less about maybe being as political. And I was kind of going down a way to where I didn't like the way I was going. So I kind of asked the question to where like I could kind of keep my tech, not the way I was going saying crazy shit for content, but maybe mm-hmm. just not the way that I cared about the delivery. Like, you know, maybe it wasn't as mm-hmm. tactful. Maybe it wasn't this, you know what I'm saying? And I just didn't like, and I knew at that point I just didn't care. You know what I'm saying? I was losing. And that's before I took a step back. But like I said, when you got so many sexy red type ass niggas, you got so many um, I'm JB type niggas, all them type niggas on the mic mm-hmm. all the time. And that's yeah. all you see on my Twitter, you know, popping balloon type ass niggas. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> and they, it, it's like even in like the small Instagram world, like niggas will get on lives just to start controversy for content, you know, and these are the motherfuckers that'll be on the shade room saying stupid shit, you know, getting a bitch break. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's stupid stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, when you, it, it, you just have to really think, like, how much more do you want to keep doing it if that's all that people are going to see? And so that that was just kind of the reason why I asked. But um, I want to ask, like, what's more in store for you after this project? How long do you want to take a break from um, I'm actually not, you know, I will not be taking another hiatus like I have in the past. I'm actually, um, I'm working on new stuff and you know, shit now, man. But, um, I'm trying to let this project breathe and trying to, you know, I'm getting some, I'm getting some other stuff done. Got some visuals on the way. Um, got some other, some other promo stuff on the way, man. Some merch on the way. It's just, I'm just trying to really stay in the moment and, uh, you know, give myself some grace. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like you, you. You took some time off. You may have, you know, slowed up a little bit, but you came back strong. People like it. It's resonating with them. It's cool. You know, you're right back on track. The only you just got to stay there. You got to stay in it. You just got to stay in it. And um, losing that motivation will make it tough. But you got to show up every day. You got to show up for yourself like you do your job. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it just, you can't expect any type of success if you're not willing to do that. If you can work 48, 50 hours at a job with a company you should be able to work at least half that for yourself in a week's time and if you can't then you ain't gonna make it anyway you know what i'm saying it is what it is but um yeah man all i'm looking forward to now is just being myself doubling down making more authentic music for people man you got you know touring what I'm you're trying to do uh, i'm actually trying to um uh, trying to get up to new york right now man uh, i got a couple Got a couple opportunities that are starting to line themselves up for me right there. You know, I don't want to speak on it too soon before it's locked in. You know, I don't want to announce a move till it's made. But yeah. But um, I do. If you always ask people that rap this question, if you had like one dream producer you could work with, one dream rapper you could work with, who would it be? That's impossible for me, man. Because it's so many, it's so many artists that it would be a dream for me to work with, man. From Anthony Hamilton to Jeezy to Lupe to Big X, the plug that would be fire. Sauce Walker, you know, it's so many. J Cole, I mean, but if I had to, like, if I was, if I was putting together a project and I had to pick, like, one song that could embody the energy of the type of stuff that I want to create, like, and to be my brand, and I could pick a producer and an artist, the producer would probably be, uh, probably be Alchemist. And the feature would be, hmm, that's tough, man. I'd probably say Cole, me and Cole, or Big Crit, or Big Crit. I think Big oh, Crit on the Alchemist beat would blow people's mind because he he has that kind of pen, and I don't, I don't think people really understand how lyrical Big Crit is. But it would have to be between Big Crit and J. Cole on the Alchemist beat with me. See, so since you, so okay, cool. Since you get two, I'm not gonna feel bad for cheating. Okay, if I had to do any song, I can't rap, so I don't uh-huh. know. How to, if I had the talent to rap, uh-huh. I would do. I would do if I do any of them. I would do a Teddy Riley and a um a Forty beat together. They worked on my beat, and I would do one with Chris Brown and Drake. If I do any of them, Chris Brown. Yeah, oh, yeah, you just trying to. Yeah, you just trying to break the box off. You trying to. It's my, to it's, I mean, it's my one. It's my I'll one own you, I'll because you, I'll I'll I, if you, I were to pick any of them, I would yeah. pick. I, I I wouldn't take the generation. I just don't see like Teddy Rock. I don't think people give Forty enough credit for the stuff that he's flipped. If you really go through, the nah, songs. he's an amazing yeah. part of why Drake's been. Come on, man, and Drake ain't know. Drake without Forty. 
And I don't know if people really know what's in Teddy Riley's bag with that new Jack, new that Bobby Brown, that new edition, mm-hmm. that his own stuff, guy, yeah. all that type of era. And so, and then on top of that, I don't really know if niggas take Drake shit out. I don't really know if niggas know how many careers Chris Brown has saved, sustained, whatever. Just mm-hmm. off, the yeah. Ball. Chris Brown's so, one of the most talented humans on earth. Like, you take, it, it's, it's you just, take that yeah. one incident out, it is no debate on no versus us or no, That shit is done. Like that's you take yeah, that. It's over it's with, out, yeah, it's over with. So I mean, I would go there. You know, I wouldn't want to put a female wise. I'd probably do Monica. Monica. I just oh, love. Man. I, I, like female Mom. wise, I think Missy. I would love to do a song with Missy Elliott. I think that would I would never get through the thing because I would say you're a flipping dipper fine yet through the whole time. We would never get I would <laughs> we would laugh. See, man, me. for me, for me, somebody like that, I know they would challenge me artistically. That's why, like when I think about a dream feature, I'm thinking about somebody that's gonna be because I mean I can write a catchy hook, and I mean, like, I could do a song with Drake and a hit boy beat, and then fucking I know that's gonna do numbers, but it's like a dream feature, a dream song that would be like, what's something that's me and something that I would have to push myself and be like, ah, like let me get in my bag with it. Would be something like that. See, like, this, so is why, this, this is why. This is why. J Cole. Like you know, when they said Dave Chappelle ruined Dylon's career. Okay, mm-hmm. this is why I'm not the artist because she ruined her own career with that. You're flip it. We could never. Can we get the song? I'd be every time I take my mic, I play. You're flip it. Like I would, I would do that the entire time. <laughs> They would have to send me my verse, and I would. Send, but if we was in the studio together, I would be like, "Could you, could you run it back?" He's like, "You need to hear your part again." I'd be like, "Yeah, could you flip it and reverse it for me?" Like we would never, our part would never get done the whole time. So I don't, I don't think it could be her. Like same with Lil John, I'd be screaming, "Yeah, did you, did you hear me?" I'd be screaming. That would be fine. Lil John yeah. would be a fine feature. I would love it. He wouldn't even have the rap. I just need ad libs. Yeah, never so, ad libs. So I, I don't know that. That would be my wish. So yeah. what? So between third and fourth, where do you think the Colts are going to finish and the AFC South? That's only two options. I think the Titans are. I nowhere. think the only competition we're going to really have, I think, is going to be between us and the Texans. I don't think we're going. I don't think we're going to be down to, towards the bottom. I really don't because. The only thing about Anthony, the only thing I'm worried about as a fan with Anthony Richardson is that he he's so gung ho and such a competitor the way he doesn't care about risking his his body and stuff, and he has to really mature and learn that stuff real quick. Because if you think about Cam, like Cam was Superman, you know, and he couldn't be stopped. And then an injury, a couple move pieces on offense, and now people acting like he wasn't an MVP. You know what yeah. I mean? Like acting like his opinion doesn't count. I'm out getting just, like, you just got to be careful. I mean, it seems like he's going to be fine. He's got all the arm talent. We got some new weapons. You know, my main concern for us right now is the defense. I want the defense to be more fortified. We need another good lockdown corner so we can really let Kenny go free and just roam, you know what I'm saying, to really play like a true nickel and, like, you know, the way you don't have to follow the number one guy. Like, yeah, we need something like that to really round us out on defense. But, I mean, personnel-wise, we always overachieve from personnel to play. But we can't – we don't win the games we should win. That's what's so frustrating about a Colts fan. We could be – we would beat the top seed in the NFL and then lose to the worst team the next week. And it's just, it's, it's just ridiculous to me. I don't understand it. I was expecting drama with that answer. I mean, you said some garbage with the top two, but I understand. But <laughs> you don't think so? Hell no, I don't think y'all gonna be. I think Jacksonville will be the worst for me, including honest. I think Jacksonville will be the worst. I don't think be the worst. I think y'all be third, but I'm just being if I'm being honest, I really think y'all overachieved by being third. I don't think the Titans were as bad as a record was. But that's because of how many games they lost by one point. Like they shouldn't have lost to y'all once. I think they should have split it. I don't think they should have lost to Houston. They lost in overtime. Um, I don't know what Tannehill did. Uh, I don't trust Will Levis. Is I don't know how good the line is. Our line was terrible. But like with y'all, like um, it's hard to say what Anthony Richards do. But he also got that shoulder. And once a nigga go down with a certain type of injury for the year, I just. I don't know. It, that's just me. That's the only reason. I mean, you can bounce back. You can't. It's possible. But it's hard to bounce back with the, the shit that you got hurt is the shit that you need to throw. If it was the opposite, yeah, all, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. So. That's kind of why, you know, and it's, it's traumatizing because that's how we lost look. Because it's just like, oh. Exactly. So, 
I think, like I said, with Jacksonville, I mean, Jacksonville literally got in because Tannehill went down and we couldn't win one fucking game. And then they lost the exact same way to us. So that's why I said we lost and we should have we should have lost that game to have a better pick. But I really don't know for that one. Um, but I really was expecting you to give me some divisional smoke. That's why I said I don't be knowing if you're talking to me online. <laughs> when I when you, <laughs> let me say something, I literally be saying something. And you just dismiss it like nah, you man. Because I mean, being a man, bro, like I got a couple buddies that's Titan fans and stuff like that, man. Which is fucking rare because y'all suck and nobody really liked them like that. You know, you know, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? That was but, the smoke I was looking for. I just want you to um, know that you know. I said that was the smoke I was looking for. I just want you to know. <laughs> that was the first time that y'all beat us since Luck retired. Other than that, we hey, it is, I mean, I mean, it's, it's hard missing a franchise generational talent quarterback to injuries because we, we y'all ass on an offensive line kick. and something yeah. though. Y'all, y'all got your ass with on onside kick return for a touchdown. I'm just bro, playing. chill, yeah. bro, chill out, chill, chill. Okay, like, y'all had, like, like, it, y'all had it every day. Think, think about it is y'all, y'all, y'all show flashes every like other year or so but like when we have certain places like when we have a consistent quarterback bro we own the south bro okay, it's just that making it to the almost. afc championship that was the luckiest shit i've ever seen in my life who goes from peyton manning to andrew luck that is the luckiest string since tom brady 20 years with the patriots let's not say when we have let's not say when we have like you went from Jimmy Johnson, Roethlisberger, like you just like a, like you just dropped. You got lucky that Peyton Manning was there for twenty, like fifteen years, and you lucked into luck. And then we don't know what you're gonna be for like the next ten. So, 15. so, so if Levis, if Levis magically comes out and is great, uh, does that make y'all lucky? Plot twist. I don't believe in him either. Okay. Last, <laughs> I'm last, just saying. Last if, quarterback, if, I believe in. Developing. Does that mean I y'all are lucky? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it is what it is. It's looking to draw across the board, I but it's just. I feel um, like our reputation. We are more. We have more of a reputation of winning consistently than the I, other teams in the division. Uh, right now, I think we like a couple wins away from tying it, but that's just because of the last four years. I think if Levis is to pan out, I don't think that it's – I don't think it's – like I think that that's with Amy Adams Strunk getting with the times and Derrick Henry leaving and them ditching an older philosophy. But I think the last part of what you said plays a factor. But um, I also think that the, what you'll find out if Anthony Richardson and them don't pan out for the next couple of years, what you'll find out we had to find out, Okay. I've been going through, man. You had like I didn't go through Matt Ryan, Philip Rivers. Uh, okay, two, three years. Jacoby is Brissett. not. What do you okay. believe? Like I didn't go through that. Okay, that was a one to two season stretch. Not that was a three, four year stretch. We had yeah. Carson yeah. Wentz, which was a, a dumpster fire. That was we I hated had, that. We went almost through my high school reunion phase. Okay, that's ten years. Okay, not. Not two or three seasons, okay, nigga. That's that's a small stretch between finding out what happened next on Dragon Ball. You know the problem. You want to know know the problem with the Titans? The problem with the Titans is, man, y'all have a lot of great skill position play. Y'all damn near like the Vikings. Y'all have a lot of great skill position players that don't that don't get the type of wins and type of uh, accolades and stuff that they deserve. Y'all got great running backs. Y'all got good defenders throughout y'all's history. But it's just like with quarterbacks, that list get real short. And it's just like, but all the great franchises have had great quarterbacks. Yeah, I feel like I feel like it's systems. It's, it's it's how you how you how you evaluate people, how you put people together. We have been more consistent at putting together teams that are capable of winning games. At this point, you know what I'm gonna tell you. I answer your question about the Titans and the quarterback question. At this point, we are so damaged and abused as a franchise. When they say, <laughs> I don't even need my husband or whoever to tell me he likes me. Just to acknowledge <laughs> that they That's what we have to work about. So you can have Anthony Richards. You can have your little championship. You can do whatever. At this point, we just want a nigga to throw us a head nod at the quarterback position. He ain't got nothing, okay? I'm, I just need us to win a couple games in the division. You can just smell the Super Bowl draws. Just – just get us well. <laughs> just, get, just get us there. You, you need, let the defense get us there. You know, put the water boy there. Just let us uh, lift the panty lines or something. Just, just what do you say? Just let me. I don't. Just let me touch it. Just uh, uh, like so. Do you, you think that y'all leaning on the run game has been y'all's downfall on these last couple of years? 
I don't think it's been a downfall because I mean, what else? I don't see all the fuck else we could have won. I mean, we had. Yeah, I was gonna say because like, what else? Did, what other options did you have? I think, but I think what killed it was the fact that they lost AJ Brown and they didn't. They lost the line. Yes, sir. Hold on one second. Um, they lost AJ Brown. They lost the line, and they thought ten. I'm gonna tell you what lost that motherfucker. Fuck it. This part is staying in. Ryan Quincy. Bitch ass Tannehill, when you have nine fucking sacks, 142 throwing yards of AJ Brown, and 150 fucking yards running, and this motherfucker throws a pick against the Bengals right there, and then he does it the next year, back to back. That's why we lost, okay? I do not want to. Hey, y'all throwing all that money at that man, no, he ain't like that, bro. Every other team know. in the league knew he wasn't like that, but y'all, I don't understand it, bro. Let everybody know, man. What the fine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Let Shout out boxing out right now. On all about you. You, you didn't mess up. Go download that. Go stream that. The Titans suck. It's Colt Nation every yeah. year, all year. Listen, bro. It is what it is, man. Appreciate you having me, man. Shout out to the More Than 92 podcast, man. Of course, man. Keep it in 100, man. Appreciate okay. you having me, bro. Of course. What do you want to close out the year doing? I want to ask huh? you that. What you want to close out the year? Like, what's your goals for the rest of the year? Man, I want to drop another project. I want to drop another project. I want to get this merch and stuff going, man. Like, I mean, like, it ain't that I want to. I'm going to. I got plans in place. I got a system in place. It's going to happen. We're going to get another project for the end of the year. So yeah. just stay tuned. Got, got you. you. Got you. Oh, man. Tannehill just ruined something else, man. But, no, nah, like I said, man, <laughs> we appreciate you, man. You can say. Shadow Boxing Dollars definitely worth the listen, definitely worth the spend. We appreciate you for coming through. Thank you for not holding us. Uh, wait no longer. Uh, it's definitely a well needed project. Um, you can find it on Apple, it's on Spotify, yeah. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Play, man. Whatever you use, title, go get it. It's out there. Let everybody know your handles, how to find you as well. Uh, Chubby Sensei raps on Instagram, Chubby Sensei everywhere. That's Chubby S E N X E I, not the traditional Sensei S E N X E I on everything. Right. You'll find me, you'll find me. Ain't hard. And if y'all got any questions, make sure you hit us up at the 8192podcast at gmail.com. And this has been another episode, and we're going to holler at y'all later. Peace. All right. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8192 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. 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 Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8192 podcast. You know how we do. We always keep it 100. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah.